Sometimes people express doubt about my choice of scale for the layout that I've made. I converted a Neon Rice HO scale plan Coalport, Maryland into an N scale one, and in 2010 I started building this layout that I named Wrightsville Port. This is a pure switching layout where I don't run train any faster than 15 scale miles per hour and mostly stay well below 10 scale miles per hour for switching operations. To make things more technically challenging, 80% of my track is modeled to be embedded in concrete and that includes 10 of my 12 turnouts. When it comes to reliable slow speed switching operation in model railroading, physics always takes side of the larger scales. Simply put, heavier your loco, better electrical connection you'll get out of that wheel rail contact. Now most in-scale switchers will be around 1.5 to 2 ounces, that is in the range of 40 to 60 grams. In HO scale, even the lightest and smallest switchers like a Buckman Spectrum 45 toner would weigh twice of that. And something like an Atlas S2 diesel will weigh 5 times of its in-scale equivalent at 10 ounces or over 280 grams. On top of that, my layout is an old school two cap DC layout with two very commonplace controllers. So was I really crazy to think that this would ever work and I'd be able to run those tiny three inch long in scale switchers that weigh a mere two ounces in less than 10 scale miles per hour consistently without stalling? Is it really possible to achieve realistic slow speed switching in such a complex layout using such humble hardware and without taking help of the hand of God? Well, that's what this episode is all about. You be the judge of that and let me know your thoughts in the comments below when you finish watching this. By the way, though I'll do my best to keep you entertained with some good music and some occasional commentary about the layout, just so that we are clear, in this video, Things will be very slow, but that's the whole point. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start at the entry point of the layout, a train with mixed freight arriving at the port through the town. This whole area is built on a shelf that is less than 9 inches in width. I have experimented with placements of buildings, adding perspective backdrops and 90 degree curves on the tracks to simulate a sense of distance in an otherwise tight space. I'm yet to build a small boatyard and a passenger ferry service for the scene. Once you enter the port, all the track is embedded in concrete just like the real thing. The clearance of the top of the track to the concrete surface is very close which is a challenge for track maintenance. You cannot run a track cleaning car on these tracks and it has to be cleaned by hand. I will cover that aspect in detail in a subsequent video. Make sure you subscribe below to receive the alert.
The delayed uncoupling is done using permanent magnets under the track. So far, I'm using truck mounted couplers, but I soon intend to experiment with body mounted couplers to see if that works any better. One thing to remember is that since this is DC, there is no speed steps or programmed acceleration or deceleration. That slow start and simulation of mass and momentum is done by adding weights and metal wheels to the rolling stock and by turning the controller knob slowly and carefully. That might seem inefficient to many in today's digital model railroading world, but for me, that is fun as well. Considering that you agree by now that it is possible to achieve realistic slow speed in N scale even with a very modest setup, the obvious next question might be, is there a secret? The answer is no, not really. Nothing beyond the very basic rules of model railroading. There is no secret ingredient. The basic of model railroading principle is simple. You need reliable, continuous and steady flow of electricity to your locomotive. Everything else is secondary, whether you use DC, AC, or DCC. All I did when I built the layout was that I made sure that the track laying is bulletproof and electrical connections are solid. I used electrofog turnouts, and as you can see, that clearly helps for short wheelbase 3 inch long N scale locos going over consecutive turnouts. And I used the best of the N scale switchers available out there. In this case, the Kato NW2. One thing that I learned through mistakes is that if there is one area in model trains where you should never skim, it is when you buy your locomotive. Once all the basics are right, it is all about good maintenance. For my layout, because of its complexities, I use slightly different variations of the standard methods that works very well for me and should work for any small or medium layout whether DC or DCC or even N or HO. I will cover that in detail in my next video, so don't forget to subscribe. Till then, goodbye and happy railroading.